you're a business leader or a leader of any kind and want to fundamentally change uh, your business, the people in it, and the world in general, watch this video. So if you learn anything from this video that's valuable and worth sharing, please share it. Thanks. Okay, uh, this video was actually inspired by my last video um, called Crush It, uh, Crush It Club 134, How to Tune Up Your Brain, uh, just because I felt like there was a lot of things that I sort of missed in it, but also I'll talk about the reason why I've decided to do a second video in a moment because it's related to the rest of the talk. So this is a combination of proven science and a speculative extension of that science, but it's not like crazy stuff. It's simply what we know, what is probably true, but has not yet been proven scientifically. So um, at least there's no research specifically that I'm aware of, or I would be citing it and saying it was proven. Uh, so what this is, is uh, one of the things that's really uh, impressive is I just learned some more today as I did a little more research, uh, that the benefits of meditation can be seen in as little as about two weeks of 20 to 30 minutes of daily practice. Now, I recommend, and I've seen many other sources, because that's where I got it from, including uh, neuroscience sources that say 45 minutes seems to be the sweet spot. More is always better. It's just, you know, if you meditate all day, you can't do anything else all day. So uh, about 45 minutes once or twice a day is oftentimes something that's recommended. Uh, but daily is pretty much essential. And this isn't really a half-assed thing. So here's one of the things that's really interesting is the meditating and especially long-time meditators show increased interconnectivity by distant regions of the brain. Um, some other things that's, that's kind of amazing that happens is while meditators are meditating in an fMRI or functional magnetic resonance imaging, machine, right? that's the computer that takes slices of the brain and looks at it and you can see it in real time, is that it upregulates the PFC, which is the prefrontal cortex up here that is responsible for executive control and uh, is the last part of your brain to myelinate, which is why your brain isn't finished maturing to full adulthood until about 25. And that includes your emotional maturity, which is why people under 25 aren't really neurologically speaking, adults yet, and have more trouble regulating their emotions, right? So that's the whole thing. The PFC is uh, associated with self-regulation and conscious control of things, like standing back and distance from your emotions, self-discipline, and the ability to think analytically and logically. That is the thinking fast and uh, slow from Daniel Kahneman, this is responsible for much of the, the slower thinking because the way your brain works and the distance of connections and speed of, speed of things, um, you feel first and then you think second. Even though it's a small difference in time, it matters what you do during that time and that you make the conscious choice to regulate your emotions in a more constructive way. So it also does some other things while you meditate and probably after for long-term meditators and it downregulates your amygdala. So far, these are all scientific facts, not speculation. So um, the amygdala is associated with the ever famous from Daniel Goleman uh, amygdala hijack, which is when basically you're an overwhelm of emotions, alarm, fear, and things like that, that fight or flight is so intense that it makes you virtually unable to think or respond in any normal way. It isn't that you feel a little anxious. Maybe it's on a, con you can think of it as on a, on a continuum, but an amygdala hijack is when your amygdala inhibits the activity of your prefrontal cortex. It's saying, don't analyze this bear, run from it. So that's an amygdala hijack. And it also, so that part of your brain being downregulated makes you likely, in fact, it's proven, uh, less anxious, but also less likely to be upset or emotional about things because the part that's the panic center, let's call it, to oversimplify it, is pretty much the amygdala, right? So now in 2011, Susan Lazar and her team at Harvard found that mindfulness meditation can actually change 
the physical structure. This is neuroplasticity now from eight weeks of mindfulness-based meditation, um, uh, found that it reduced stress, surprise, surprise, and found it actually increased the cortical thickness in the hippocampus, which governs the um, learning and memory. And I believe it's also responsible for attention. I don't know that for a fact, but the attentional centers of meditators are usually better as well as these learning centers. And that's not surprising because you need attention to learn. None of us have an eight second attention span, by the way. Okay, not without neurological damage. So um, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna add my own experiences because I've been meditating on and off for a long, long time, like 35 years, should have been not dumb and done it the whole time, but I didn't. I'd be a whole different person had I done so. So um, these, uh, this um, uh, improved emotional regulation is good because that raises your EQ. And unless you're already a social genius, you probably need more of that. I know I do. I'm far from perfect, <laughs> far from perfect. Uh, okay, so the next one is because of the diverse interconnections, the fact that distant parts of your brain are connected together. Now, this is speculation on my part, but it's just a short jump and could probably be proven if the right research was done today. And that is because of the diverse interconnections within your brain, distant regions of the brain, I think it's very likely that people who are very creative, who come up with lots of novel solutions and innovations and unique solutions are people who have that more of that interconnectivity. I've been inventing all my life. So between that and the meditation I do, uh, oftentimes uh, I come up with ideas in the morning while I meditate. And one of the things that has happened is the idea for this video came up while I was meditating this morning. It was like, yeah, no, this is, this is something I got to talk about, or I think will be beneficial to my audience. So um, also the other thing that happens is after a lifetime of practice of putting ideas together and the meditation, a lot of things that other people say, I just have no idea how to do this. I go, I know you just told me about it, but you could do this. And they go, oh, really? Yeah, no, I could do that. I'm going to try that. Doesn't mean it's going to work, but what is oftentimes an intractable problem for others has an obvious solution to me. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing with the, this consultancy, because it doesn't seem to matter, matter the field. I can connect distant things. Many years of practice. Okay, so um, some other things that are different is that um, daily longtime meditators and Daniel Goleman in a video, which will be linked here somewhere, um, as well as in the description, of course, talks about how super meditators or what do you call them? Um, Olympic level meditators, that's what he called them, emit far more gamma waves. Now, this isn't some metaphysical Dr. X bullshit. This is real stuff. This is high frequency brain waves that normally, as he put it, he says, when we imagine biting into an apple and we integrate all our senses or we come up with a solution to a problem, we might blip out half a second of gamma waves. Uh, so this same frequency in, in experienced meditators, they either can produce it for an extended period of time during their whole meditation. And these Olympic level ones emit them constantly. The rest of us, we get them about half a second at a time. So it lets you know there's something really profound happening, especially for, for long time meditators, but for anybody who does it more than about two weeks. So, so I want to tell you what this isn't. This isn't bullshit law of attraction nonsense. Law of attraction and all the claims they make is based on zero real science. It is absolute bullshit. If you want to know why, please reach out to me. There's no real science behind it. So also note that this really isn't a religious thing as such. You know, like, sure, Buddhist monks meditate, but they also walk. You walk. Does that mean you're Buddhist? Right? So. It's also what I love about this uh, it is that um, one of the reasons they always reference Buddhist monks is because the Buddhist monks have been doing it for 2,500 years 
and have probably spent the most time developing it. So much of the research has been done on them when they looked at advanced meditators, but not only them. Um, so here's the thing compared to the, uh, the secret bullshit. This is better than that because it's actually real. We have science to back this up. Whether you believe it or not, if you meditate consistently, you will get benefits. Okay, this isn't about belief and faith and ignoring the negative, which is actually, honestly, you don't want to obsess on it, but ignoring it all the time or ignoring it as much as possible is actually stupid and reduces your, your chances of success. And I can give reference to that if you want. Okay, um, now let's see here. Um, here are the lessons that you can draw from what I learned and my speculation and hopefully this that can help you. And the lessons are start immediately. In two weeks, you will see benefit. It's subtle. It will probably take a month or more before other people will notice it. But if you start now and you never quit and you do it daily for, I recommend 45 minutes uh, is sort of an optimal time. I also recommend doing it in the morning immediately after waking. That's the best time for me because uh, immediately after waking, morning or not, and the reasons that's such a good time is you won't fall asleep during your meditation. You can just lay in bed and meditate with no fear of falling asleep. Because many people who even sit up and meditate in the middle of the day or later in the day, they just fall asleep. And sleeping isn't meditation. It's not the same stuff. Okay. Um, so uh, let's bring this back down to earth what this isn't, continuing with the, the, uh, the secret bullshit. And that is, it isn't magic spelled I-C-K as in real magic, because real magic doesn't exist. This is scientifically validated by neuroscience. Does magic exist? Well, not according to science. We don't have any proof of it. What this is not also is it's not spiritual or religious, and it certainly isn't instant. Right. This isn't an instant, oh, manifest everything you want bullshit like you get when you go to a Tony Robbins thing. And then you get back to the real world and find out, guess what? Your life hasn't changed. He just made you feel like it has because he's a master dopamine dealer. Obviously, the effects are actually pretty subtle. They're cumulative and they're, uh, uh, they're gradual and they're cumulative. And over the long term, it will make a profound difference in your brain, how you think, how you reason, how well you think, reason, learn, and everything else. Uh, but just to give you an idea how not effortless it can be, it's not hard, but it's certainly not effortless. The Dalai Lama in his book talks about uh, meeting and talking to uh, neuroscientists and saying, is there any way you can make meditation easier for me? It's hard. And he's meditated all of his life for an average of about seven hours a day now. So it's not easy. It's not instant. But the benefits are real and validated by neuroscience. It'll take time and consistent effort. Uh, in my experience, like I said, it takes more like a month to really notice it. It's still going to be subtle. But if you stick with it, uh, the benefits are basically inevitable. You just got to do it. So the immediately actionable solution is to meditate every day for at least 20 minutes, though 45 is better, and do it immediately after waking up is my own personal recommendation, and do it for the rest of your life without stopping to get the very maximum benefit. Think where you will be in 20 years if you do. That's it for Crush It Club 135. Meditation, manifestation. My name is Tim B. Green. Bye for now.